there are two common ways of dealing with confounding. The first is stratification, which is relatively easy, and we'll come back to this on the next slide. And the second way is conditioning, which involves regression. We won't be covering regression in this context in LHS 610, but I encourage you to consider taking a course in linear regression or logistic regression, which will help you figure out how to account for multiple factors when you're looking at a relationship between an exposure and an outcome. And when people say in scientific papers, we found this association adjusting for these other factors, they're really referring to conditioning or to regression. We already established that age is a confounder of the relationship between chronic kidney disease and mortality. So how could we do a stratified analysis that would give us a better answer of whether chronic kidney disease itself raises your risk of death? In the unadjusted analysis, we simply, simply looked at uh, a correlation between chronic kidney disease and uh, mortality. But another way of doing this that would take into account that confounder of age would be to stratify our analysis based on age. An example of a way to do that in this data would be to look at the relationship between chronic kidney disease and mortality for each decade of life. So again, if you didn't take into account age, what you'd actually find is that the people who have chronic kidney disease on average are older than those who don't. And therefore it looks like, you know, these people are definitely gonna be at higher risk of dying. But if you risk, if you limit your analysis to 40 year olds with chronic kidney disease, and you look at and compare those people to the 40 year olds who don't have chronic kidney disease, that will give you a more accurate uh, assessment of whether chronic kidney disease itself raises your risk of dying. And so similarly, you, you could do that for each decade of life. So you, you could look at 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, 70 year olds, 80 year olds. And what you might find is that in some decades of life, having chronic kidney disease does raise your risk of death. And maybe that risk is actually different in different decades of life. And so it might be true that if you're looking at 80 year olds, chronic kidney disease doesn't raise your risk of death by that much because the risk of death is already higher based on people's age. So I'm not saying that that's true. I'm just saying this is how you might approach the analysis and would be you know, how you would look at this. In the earlier example of smoking and coffee causing heart disease, you could look separately at the relationship between coffee and heart disease amongst those people who smoke and amongst those people who don't smoke. And that would be a way of using stratification to deal with confounding, to give you a more representational answer that's actually more likely to be true uh, as a measure of that association. Note that one of the limitations to stratification is that you can only deal with observed confounding, which refers to confounding that's related to a variable in your data set. You can't deal with unobserved confounding using stratification alone. And Unobserved confounding refers to confounding that's related to a variable outside of your data set. And we already referred to an example earlier in the example of whether starting a diet results in weight loss. Because many of those factors that are true in someone who starts a diet, like increased exercise, increased motivation, um, other things they might be doing uh, on the side to try to lose weight that aren't part of the actual diet, you know, those variables are not going to be in the data set. And so those variables put you at risk for having unobserved confounding that give you a false picture of the relationship between starting a diet and losing weight. Let's take another look at confounding and what its effects can result in. So surgery and lithotripsy are two ways of treating kidney stones. Based on this first chart, tell me what you think is the more effective treatment. And if you're like me, you're looking at that first row in this table and saying that, well, for small kidney stones, it looks like surgery is more effective than lithotripsy. And for large kidney stones, it looks like surgery is more effective than lithotripsy. So my answer here is, it looks like surgery is more effective than lithotripsy for the clearance of stones. And the percent here is, did the stone actually cl get cleared? However, 
let's look at our analysis for all stones. And if we do that, we find a situation that, at least initially, looks pretty surprising. Because even though we found that surgery is more effective than lithotripsy for small stones and for large stones, when you actually combine all the stones and look at all kidney stones, it appears to be this, the case that lithotripsy is more effective than surgery. And if you're looking at this and are surprised, or this is the first time you've ever seen this data set, um, feel free to add up the numbers for yourself, and you'll see that nothing is made up here. Using straight math, you can reproduce this anomaly, um, or what seems to be something that you know, is a paradox and doesn't seem possible. So why is this the case? This is an example of Simpson's paradox, which in this particular case can also be thought of as an example of unobserved confounding. When we looked at that second analysis, which included all kidney stones and the rate of clearance after surgery versus lithotripsy, that was in many ways an unadjusted analysis. We were looking at all cases and we found that lithotripsy appeared to be more effective. However, it turns out that the size of the stone is important because if you have a small stone, this is likely to be an easier case. And if you have a large stone, this is likely to be a more difficult case from a medical perspective. And when surgeons come across easier cases, they feel like they don't want to expose people to the risk of surgery. So let's first try lithotripsy. And when people come across, or surgeons come across a more difficult case, which is a larger stone, they don't want to risk putting a patient through two different procedures, because if a lithotripsy fails, they're going to have to treat the stone surgically. So surgeons kind of already know that in their minds, surgery is more effective. And the way they're practicing, they're only doing surgery on those people who they perceive are going to be more difficult to clear with a lithotripsy alone. So even though the truth is that surgery is more effective than lithotripsy, it turns out that lithotripsy is more commonly used in easier cases and surgery is more commonly used in harder cases with larger stones. And so the difficulty of the case is actually the confounder here. And while it's not directly measured in this data set, you can think that in a way, the size of the stone is an indicator of how difficult the case is. So uh, basically, the adjusted analysis is giving you the true answer because you're accounting for something that's affecting the surgeon's decision-making, which is, is this a difficult case and therefore I'm gonna opt for surgery? Or is this an easy case and therefore I'm gonna first try lithotripsy? And so the unadjusted analysis can fool you into thinking that lithotripsy is more effective when in fact the opposite is true.